Welcome into the Jets Nation Radio, sponsored by Betway. Make sure you like and subscribe to Jets Nation Radio so you never miss a podcast. Good morning and welcome into Jets Nation Radio, joined by my all-time favorite NHL hmm. All-Star, John Scott. How's it going, sir? It's good, Angus. How are you? Thanks for having me back on. I'm doing good. Uh, thank you for hopping back on this one. Um, so last time we talked, the Jets were sitting on top of the West. We were feeling real good about this team and then nearly a historic collapse. Uh, do you think that could almost happen again to this team? Again to this team? Yeah. I don't I don't think you see them at the top of the Western Conference again this season. I think last year was kind of the high water mark for this team as it's put together right now. I think you're seeing, you know, obviously Mark Shifley questions surrounding him. I don't think he necessarily wants to be there. They lost Blake Wheeler. I, I don't know. Pierre-Luc Dubois is gone. That Those are some big pieces that are exiting. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we'll see them, unfortunately, in the same position that they were last year before they kind of imploded. So is that just a lack of skill that they managed? Because like, they lost the big piece of Pierre-Luc Dubois, and do you just think the three guys they brought in are not quite that quality? No, I think they won that trade, actually. I like Alex Iafalo, and I love Gabriel Velarde. I, th- I think at the end of the year, y- you will see one of those two guys maybe have a b- bigger output than Pierre-Luc Dubois. I, I just think this team is is not in a good headspace after that implosion. I think losing Blake Wheeler, I think Connor Hellebuck is on the way out. I think Mark Scheifele is on the way out. You see the the beginning of the end here for this group, where they had their run. They've been together for a decade almost. And the end is in sight. I I believe firmly that both of those guys won't finish the season in Winnipeg because I I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just, it doesn't feel like the promise, the aspirations are the same in years past based on how last year ended, how this off season is gone how Connor Hellebuck's situation is kind of rounding out the, the trade rumors circling Mark Shifley, the no extension. It doesn't seem to me coming into a training camp as a player, if I was going into this situation, I don't feel like we would have a winning atmosphere going into the camp. Oh, that's interesting. Cause I thought with like the loss of Blake Wheeler, like this, that might be the spark that really gets this team really? going. Yeah. But, but again, why though? Why though? Because he was loved in the locker room. He was the captain. Obviously, he had the C stripped. What does that do to the locker room to lose such a key cog in that room? Because I had the same situation happen in San Jose where they were Stanley Cup favorites the year before. They went up 3 0 versus LA, then lost four in a row. The big collapse. Coming in the next season, they stripped Jumbo of the C, gave it to Pavs. Everybody thought that was going to answer the question, and it just ruined everything. Mm. So in my eyes, Wheeler, even though he didn't have a C last year, probably still acted as the C in the room and was still that guy. You lose him, you don't really replace him with anybody. Mark Scheifele, everybody knows, he's made it known, he doesn't really see himself there long term. I don't know how this situation is better. Yeah, you're you're right about that. Uh, Wheeler, uh, yeah, and you're absolutely correct. Uh, Wheeler was definitely the pseudo captain of that team last season. I just think with him out of the room, uh, I think everyone else can kind of breathe, and you could see a guy like Josh Morrissey or Adam Lowry really step into their own and take over the role. And I think th- those guys would be a better fit for leading a city or leading the team, just because they are a little bit more blue collar, especially Lowry. Well, they have to be. There's there's no other option right now because your leader is not going to be Shifley. No. Because he, he's gone. And I, I think it's Morrissey's team. He's got the long-term deal. He's the all-star. He had the career year last year. But when you look at this, it's Kyle Connor. Is he that guy who's going to step up and fill those shoes left by Shifley and Wheeler? Uh, I don't know. I don't think Nicholas Ehlers has that kind of makeup as a hockey player. So, yeah, it's going to have to be Morrissey. And Connor, maybe. And and then what about Hellebuck, your starting goaltender? What Where does he fit into this situation? Because he's the guy who really kind of runs the team. If he's not going, you know, wh- where is Winnipeg going to end up? So there's a lot of question marks going into camp. When you look at them on paper, though, Angus, they, they got a great team. Their top two lines are very good. Their defense is solid. And they have one of the best goaltenders on the planet. So on paper, they look great. But I, I just think right now mentally and just as a team, the mood isn't going to be great going into camp. 
Yeah, unless Connor Hellebuck and Mark Shifley act like they're going to be just rentals for the year and that, you know, their time is coming to an end and which is going to suck because you can't make a good trade for Connor Hellebuck where you're going to win. And Shevel Dayoff loves to win trades. So if he can't win, I think we're going to watch Hellebuck walk away at the end of the season. Mark Shifley's probably traded at the deadline is my best prediction right now. But uh, Laurent Brassois, I don't know. I've got a lot of faith that that guy could be the next Jet starter. Yeah, he's a, he's a great goalie. So the, it's not like there will be that much of a loss when you lose Hellebuck. Because like you said, Brassois is good. A great goaltender, potentially. So there, there won't be that much of a movement there. But you're already talking about moving guys at the deadline. You're already talking about just jettisoning players or starting goaltender, your first line center. You, your potential captain for the season if he signs an extension. But I don't know. I, I just think Winnipeg, for me, has always been – a team of what ifs every single season the potential is there and then it just somehow some way whether it's injuries whether it's just bad play whether it's issues with the coach it just doesn't work out and even when I was playing back 10 years ago it was like man they have the best defense in the league they have veteran forwards they're gonna make it then they just something happens and I, I want them to be successful I love the trade for Bielik Dubois I think they win that trade hands down but again, can they compete in the West with the Vegas, Calgary, not Calgary, Edmonton, those types of teams that all got better this offseason? And I don't did, think Winnipeg got drastically better. Did Vegas actually get better? Well, I don't think they got worse. Well, that's that's fair enough. Uh... So they're the Stanley <laughs> Cup champs. I don't think they have to get much better. But when you look at their roster compared to other teams, they're a good team. They're a hard out. When you got Jack Eichel, Stevenson, Carlson as your top three centers – you're doing something right. And you're going to have a full speed Mark Stone this year, who was maybe not 100% the whole season. So they're the team to be in the West. So I think LA gets better. I think Edmonton gets better, if not staying the same. Jack Campbell hopefully will be improved this year. But I don't know. Uh, it, it's it's not it's not Stanley Cup or bust this year for the Winnipeg Jets. It's maybe make the playoffs. I think that's a good season for them. You just got to beat the Central Division, though. And that's I think that's the weakest division in the whole league. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> St. Louis isn't looking good. Chicago's rebuilding. Minnesota's stuck in salary cap hell. So there, there's a potential there to squeak in the playoffs. And yeah, you never know. Maybe they make some noise. Colorado, Dallas are always good. So just getting past the wild for that third spot, I think, is the, the sweet spot for the Winnipeg Jets right now. And who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm not, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but they, they have an opportunity, like you said, being in that garbage division with the, <laughs> the Coyotes and Blackhawks and Predators are looking pretty, pretty rough this year. So I don't know, may, maybe they will make the playoffs, but is that a good thing for this team if they just squeak into the playoffs long term? What do you think? Oh, absolutely not. If they have another absolute blowout like they did this past spring, it's what's the point? five games that's especially like Winnipeg they love we love our whiteout parties and you know you go out there it's four degrees and you're just freezing your ass off I don't want to do that again and I've said this uh, time and time ago uh, and again on my show it's like uh, we're in the business of winning Stanley Cups like uh, this isn't a season to like well let's let's really try to make the playoffs and lose in the first round of Colorado that that's not what we're here for so if I'm shoveled the day off at my roster i'm saying let's just retool we have some good young players wrapped up we have some good guys that came in from the dubois trade we have some draft capital that we can use the next few years we have you know two second rounders next year maybe pick up something deal shifley deal hell about get some more potential first rounders and and see what we can do here but i i just don't think and like you mentioned it i don't think shovel day up has that in him he likes to win trades he doesn't like to sell guys low and can he kind of swallow his pride a little bit and humble himself and be like, we, we're going to lose. We have to, we have to start losing in order to rebuild this franchise. When you look at all the teams who are in the top spot, minus Vegas, who is an aberration because of the expansion draft, but the Colorado's, the Edmonton's, all these teams, they went through the lean years to be able to get McKinnon, Ranton and McDavid, Dreidsidel. You have to do it to get those star players, right? So you can't keep picking 10th to 15th and expect to get stars out of those drafts yeah fair enough um yeah and i think you're the only person that i've actually talked to that actually believes that because i've heard a few times people are like oh, i'd rather watch a losing team that wants to at least try no. their best but yeah pretty, pretty fr frustrating uh coach bonus uh you know blew up at the team at during the playoffs uh how what kind of vibe does that set in the room 
again, it, he's trying to win. He's trying to do the right thing, but it's frustrating. Like you don't want your coach ripping, let alone ripping the best players. I've been there. He, he's trying to win a, a playoff round and it's just not working. So I, I don't think there's any carryover from that. I think he likes his, he loves Morrissey. He loves Kyle Connor. He loves those guys. I don't think that's going to change and he'll be fine. Yeah, I, I don't see that as an issue at all. I like Rick Bonus. I think he's a good coach. I don't know. Is he a good fit for Winnipeg? You had Paul Maurice for years. Was there someone between Maurice and Bonus? Uh, Dave forgetting? Lowry. The Lowry. How do you see Bonus fitting long term with these Jets? Well, uh, uh, he's only got two. He's got one more guaranteed year on his contract, and the next year is if he wants to stick around, he can. Otherwise, he can mm-hmm. just retire. Uh, I like Rick Bonus, uh, just a guy that I think I could get along with. So, uh, I know some of my friends are like, this guy's the biggest tool out there. So I think he's a good fit for Winnipeg, maybe not for my, Mark Shifley. So, well, he won't have to worry about that for long. No. So, <laughs> Shifley, I don't even think he makes a deadline. I think he's gone earlier. I think teams will jump on that opportunity to get him into the fold quickly. That That's what I think Winnipeg should do. Chevy should trade him early. I think you benefit more from getting rid of a guy in the December, January range and having to wait to the trade deadline. So we'll see. I don't know. Maybe they rip off a huge winning streak and then they're, they're, this is the worst thing that can happen to the jets if they're in it. And then what do you do? Do you trade these guys or do you, do you just keep them because, Oh, we're in the playoff run. And then you add somebody at the deadline, then you lose in the second round maybe. And then it's just like, what do we just do? We didn't get anything for Hellebuck. We didn't get anything for Shifley. And we lost all. We traded our first rounder because we thought we could make one last ditch effort with these guys. That's the worst thing that can happen for the Jets right now is to to have any sort of success in the first like three months of the season. You want them to lose, Goose. You want them to lose back. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is interesting. <laughs> You're the first guy telling me this stuff because everyone's just so hot and heavy on the Jets. So I love it. Well, I... Uh... I'm a realist. I think people are just playing at fantasy land where it's like, oh, we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. Uh, everybody thinks that. I think you just have to see where you're at. And I I, I look to the Chicago Blackhawks. They had their Stanley Cup run. Then it's like, we're done. We're cutting bait. We tried. We brought in Flurry. We brought in Jones. We brought in all these guys. We tried to do one last ditch effort. Didn't work. Boom. Everybody's gone. Debrinkit, Kubelik. Everybody was gone. Kane was gone. Everybody. And they just, they made it obvious. We're, we're tanking. And now look, they got Connor Bedard. They bring in Taylor Hall. They're still, still a few years out, but instead of a prolonged like clawing and trying to hang on and like be a, be a contender for a few more years and milk the last few years, like the Washington Capitals are in right now, the Blackhawks will be Stanley cup contenders probably in four years because of how they just like bought into the tank. Now they got the best player on the planet potentially, right? And they have a ton of salary cap space. And they're going to be able to use that to entice people to come and play with Connor Bedard. So I think you just got to go for it. Embrace it for two years, three years, get some high-end players in your system, and then you start to rebuild. But then you you look like you're the Penguins, you're the Capitals, you're these teams that just language languish in this oh, we're still good, we're still good, we're going to win a cup, and then you lose in the first round. Or you don't make the playoffs. But you're still there. Like, Penguins are stuck there for three years. The Capitals will be there for three years because they want to do right by Ovi. They want to do right by Crosby. There's no loyalty in hockey. This is a business. You're in it to win Stanley Cups. Who cares? Like, just move on. It's I love the Bill Belichick mode where it's like, we're going to, we're going to trade you. You're not going to help us win. So why would I want to keep you on the roster? You, you're not my son. I'm not here to play favorites. I'm here to win games for Pete's sake. I don't know. Love it. Um, so how do you how do the Jets avoid becoming the Edmonton Oilers of the 2010s if they decide to go for this rebuild? Because we were talking, you were talking to Yakupov yesterday. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, it, it, the Edmonton Oilers situation was completely dysfunctional. We had two Oilers back to back, Sheldon Surya and Yakupov, and it just they they bought into the let's just get the guys who won cups. They brought in McTavish and Kevin Lowe and all these guys who were on those teams. Messier was there for a little bit and it just didn't work. Like they didn't have the right guys pulling the strings up top. And I don't think they had the the talent development people around these young players. Listening to Yakupov talk, I, I felt so bad for the kid. He was a star player who came into Edmonton and he just felt like he was an afterthought the moment he got there. No one talked to him. No one took him, un- took him under his wing. The only friend he had, he said, was Darcy Hortichuk for Pete's sake. Like that's, that's an issue 
if your fourth line scratch tough guy is taking your star number one overall pick under his wing like you don't you don't want that like I'm not taking a star guy under my wing. Like that's, that's reserved for the star players to, to mentor the star players. If Darcy Hordachuk is teaching Yakupov how to take a one time, or there's something wrong there and going out to dinner, like, no, that doesn't work. So for the jets to just not have this happen, I think you just need the right people in the upper management position. So you have to look at Kevin shovel day off. Is he the guy he's been there for what? 15 years. Yeah. Since day he's- one. Since the inception. So it all starts from him. Is he the guy who's going to scout and draft and pick the right players and, and develop them? I don't know. The, I, I don't, I know Chevy a little bit. I don't know how he's done with the Winnipeg young players. Do you guys have a good farm system that you, you constantly produce NHL value players? When I look at your roster, most of your good players come via trades, a few homegrown guys in Shifley and Connor and Ehlers, but other than that, you got Schmidt, Pionk, Dylan, DeMello. You, you have a few more guys up front, Niederreiter, Velarde, Ayafalo, Dubois was a trade you brought in. So do you have the type of system that can develop young guys who can be productive NHL players? I, I don't know. that You're the Winnipeg insider. You tell me that. But that that's how you avoid that, where you just you get a number one overall, you rush them, and then it just stunts their growth. Or you can develop them, do it the right way, and put good people around them to kind of mold a good superstar i don't know yeah fair fair enough i wouldn't call me an insider i'm just a guy with a podcast (laughs) stop you are the guy in jets nation so i i just i am akin to this because i've seen i've seen such superstar players come through like high draft picks top five and they get ruined like i saw benoit puglia with minnesota who in my eyes has some of the best skill set i've ever seen he wasn't developed. No one took him under his wing. I saw it in Buffalo. They had Mikhail Grigoranko. They had uh, Nikita Zadorov. They they ruined those. Even a, a Rasmus Mr. Line in Buffalo, they didn't manage him well. Cody Hodson. Buffalo was terrible at, at managing players, and they had all these high draft picks. But I've seen the other side of it where you, where you go to a good franchise, and it's like, man, they know how to develop these players. They know how to take care of them. And it's just night and day, the difference between how, how teams operate with their young players. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. I said I'd only grab 15 minutes off of you. I got three quick, fun questions. Uh, you spent some time at summer camp for this summer, correct? Pardon me. Sorry. What was that again, Goose? Oh, uh, you spent some time at summer camp this summer, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted I, I did summer camps for 12 years. I'll, I got a couple questions for you about it. Okay. Uh, what Shoot. was your uh, what was your favorite camp meal? Oh gosh. Um, I was just an old fashioned hamburgers. Like I, I am just meat and potatoes. It doesn't have to be special. My kids are all noodles and stuff, but my, one of my favorite meals is just like hamburgers and fries. So anything simple just works for me. Right on. Uh, did you have a favorite camp game? Um, oh man, I, I developed a name, a game called ducky where I, I tied a, a foam ring to a rope and I would swing it around and you got to jump over the foam ring. If it hits you, you're out. If not, you're inside. I thought that was a pretty fun game. I got crazy dizzy, but it's fun. (laughs) I love it. Well, that's everything I've got today, John. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for being here or having me. I'm I'm like used to my show. Thanks for being here. Yeah. No, this was great, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. And maybe if the jets uh, go on a winning streak, I'll come back on and just like, apologize to everybody how wrong i was well Well, if they go on a losing streak and start rough then you can say yeah i was right they should have done it this way i i predict they'll be middle of the pack and it'll be a typical maybe should be what should we do year and then they'll just end up with uh, just tough decisions and then they'll just i I think they'll trade shifley and hang on to hellebuck oh see i'm the other way around i think they hold on to shifley here no way. But I, I think you you nailed it. It's like, what are you going to get for Hellebuck? Is, is a team really going to pay you that much for him? Whereas I think Shifley, you will get a lot for him. He's a good young player, still only 30. I think he's a guy you want in the playoffs. So he'll get you first, maybe a second. And at, I mean, the with deadline. that contract he has, $6.1 million. You can make that work on a good team. Oh, man, Goose. Like, I, he is your prized player right now to get some assets back for next year in the future. I think if I'm Chevy, I am just looking my chops. I'm calling up all these top teams saying, hey, man, I'll eat four, three, four mil of this salary. Give me two, three first rounders. If Hagel can get two, what what can Shifley get? Right. So yeah. you got you got some 
you know, light at the end of the tunnel here, but it has to, you got to thread that needle pretty good this season. We'll see if uh, Chevy has it in him. I think he should have been fired years ago, but that's a whole nother <laughs> You story. and me both there, John. I don't know what he has on the owner in Winnipeg, but maybe they just like him there. Who knows? Something's got to change here. It's got to change. Not All you right. though. No, not you. No, Jets Nation is going to stick around for a long time with me at the helm. That's All right. Q. Sorry. Right. Well, thank you for having me on. I'll let you go. Yes. Thank you. Have a good one. We'll see ya. See ya. Bye.